Uh, well, thank you. I, um, I'm so pleased that this program is happening this morning. As Steve has said, I lobbied actually uh, rather energetically for something that would deal with the many political or legal ramifications of what's going on relative to uh, the racism that is uh, infecting the country. Um, and uh, uh, my topic is a little different than the prevailing theme for this morning. I'm gonna be talking about the labor union. I'll be fairly brief, uh, but I think at a deep level, there's a them thematic connection because I'll be talking about courage in the face of intimidation. And there's no doubt that Amy and her colleagues and the people that they represent are showing real courage in the face of serious threat. I'm calling my reflection, the power of the powerless, a salute to Mother Jones. Mother's Day is just a few weeks away. As the day approaches, let's keep Mary Harris Jones, AKA Mother Jones in mind. She never got the memo, that memo that women were to be caretakers leaving the pioneering to men. She was both caretaker and pioneer especially the latter, and what a pioneer she was. Let's reel the film back to the year 1900. We're in the Gilded Age. This is the era of John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, the rise of railroads, the telegraph, vast gray factories, and soulless monopolies. On the surface, all is beautiful but this beauty is built on a mountain of despair. 72 hour work weeks, child labor, sweatshops, slum housing projects, the lockout and blacklisting of laborers who protested. Many are hired just a few hours or days at a time for backbreaking jobs and are always competing for what little work they can get. Pay is dispensed like so many crumbs swept off the table. Against this background stands a 70 year old woman, gray hair, broad brimmed black hat, long black dress and mannerly. She knew something about hardship and despair. She had lost her husband and her four children to smallpox. She lived in grinding poverty. Upon emigrating from Ireland to this country, though trained as a school teacher, she could only get work as a seamstress making clothes for the privileged. From this vantage point, she saw and felt the cruelty of the system. By her middle years, she was a committed activist who couldn't be stopped. When she died at age 100, she had logged 60 years as nothing less than a lion of Judah whose heart was on fire for justice. She often hearkened back to the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt. And if there was a Moses on the cusp of the labor movement, that person was grandmotherly Mary Harris Jones. She was creative and inclusive. As a day laborer while in her early forties, she formed the Knights of Labor, welcoming women, people of color, immigrants, and all who needed a decent job. However, this fledgling labor organize, organization lost support because a pro-labor demonstration erupted in the violence of the Haymarket Square incident. Blame was spread randomly and Knights of Labor could not escape the fallout from that anarchic day in 1886. She was slowed only briefly. She waded into mining towns and established a union called the United Mine Workers. She organized mop and broom brigades made up of miners wives who beat on pans to scare mules away from hauling coals, thus disrupting business as usual. She organized a children's strike around the motto, we want time to play. She was a model of perseverance. No gain was enough to justify claiming victory when there was more to do. 
The authorities threw her in jail, used all means of intimidation, and she would not stop. When she was 72 years old, a federal spokesperson called her the most dangerous woman in America. She had a holy anger. She embodied a Hebrew prophet that says, in effect, there is a point at which patience is not a virtue. As she was dragged off to jail, she exposed the industrial giants for what they were. She would say to her cohorts, just fight like hell until you get to heaven. She was a person of powerful faith. It was as if she saw the world as God sees it. She experienced firsthand the bondage of children, women, and men, and couldn't help but lift her voice. She demonstrated the power of powerlessness as she echoed Moses, let my people go. In the final analysis, the robber barons couldn't compete with the raw truth and the challenges as she helped so immeasurably to set in motion. Obviously, we need leaders like Mother Jones today. And let's search for them in the ranks of women, the elderly, the poor, all who have been marginalized in one way or another. Those who have already walked the hard road are not likely to be afraid of the hard road ahead. In our search for leadership, let's also look to ourselves despite our ordinariness. At the outset, Mother Jones was supremely ordinary, and so was Thomas Merton, Oscar Romero, Sojourner Truth, and many more. We cannot use our ordinariness as an excuse to turn away from the Mother Jones who resides latent in our own minds and hearts, waiting to be set free. The Lion of Judah within ourselves needs to be set free, certainly now. Our crises are at least as great as those of the Gilded Age for all the reasons we hear about on our ICUJ Friday mornings, including this morning. Mother Jones had a no holes barred vision for justice that lit the sky. Let's honor her by letting her spark fire our fire, spark our fire, a fire that burns until we have lived out our role for the healing of the world.